Anyway, so moving into your reading, when I was shuffling the cards, what I saw was, um, it seems to me, it looks like um, one of those bedtime stories that you read to your kids. There's like a, a blue sky and there's like a cartoon um, moon, like a crescent moon. And then on top of it is this little um, puff of clouds. And there's a child um, lying on this puff of clouds and is kind of like resting on this moon and reading a book. And the child looks really, really content. So the imagery basically indicates to me that this is going to be a very emotionally stable, emotionally fulfilling type of a week for you. Um, the energies from the cards are also corroborating the same theme. I feel like there's going to be a lot of happiness, a lot of contentment, and just the sense of feeling at peace with yourself. Okay. Um, first off, the, the first card that fell out of the deck when I was shuffling here is the Wheel of Fortune. It doesn't get any better than this. This is you juggling all the responsibilities in your life and doing so with great success. Okay. Um, what I do feel is, um, you know, there has been a lot of, um, you have dealt with a lot of very, very intense people. And I also feel you might have dealt with people who have really weird quirks and they might have, um, they're, they're very emotionally, very, very up and down. Okay. One minute they're calm. The next minute they're like uh, fly off the handle. One minute, they're very, very, they keep to themselves. The next minute, they like talk your ears off. And I feel like you have surrounded yourself or you have been surrounded by all of these really eccentric characters and they might not have been emotionally stable. And I, I feel like for some of you, this could be in the work front, especially. I see you, you know, sitting down calmly doing your work. And then I feel like, somebody comes in with an emergency. It's not really an emergency, but they make their issues your issues. They make their emergencies your emergencies. And I feel like, you know, you have to not get rattled by them. You have to find ways to deflect the situation or de-escalate the situation or to make sense of a situation for them. So I see you having to wear many hats. I see you having to take care of a lot of responsibilities. And I see you doing so in a very expert manner where you don't drop the ball. Okay. So that's what I'm sensing. Doing a lot of work for other people. Uh, making sense of a situation for other people. Juggling many priorities. Wearing many, many hats. And doing so in, a, um, in an expertly way where you get things done. You take care of your responsibilities and you get things done in a timely manner. I also feel as if some people in your work environment are also dodging responsibilities. It's like not so much that they're dumping responsibilities on you, but the fact is that you're so efficient with your time and you're so good at what you do. It takes you less time to do things than, and, and with other people, it takes them twice the time to do things. And so people are being selective about coming to you rather than coming to the other people because it takes too long. And just make sure you draw very clear boundaries and make sure you tell them, you know, this is other people <laughs> juggling two things and feeling very frazzled, whereas you're juggling multiple things. And you're not frazzled at all. Okay, so you're you're definitely on a higher caliber. And because of that, people come to you and they want your expert advice. And you find a lot of people coming to you for counsel, for assistance, to clarify things for them. So just make sure that you do what is fair for you. You don't have to, you know, tell them um, go away or anything like that. But you kind of need to draw uh, firmer boundaries, okay? Because if this happens on a perpetual basis, you're doing twice the work as other people and it might not bode well because it, it absolves the other people from doing their fair share of the work. Okay. Um, so drawing very, very clear boundaries, um, that needs to be said, but I feel like you're going to be able to do that. You show up here as the Empress and once again, defending your territory, drawing clear boundaries. She has a shield up. So that means, you know, 
Um, she's very protective of her energy. She's very discerning about who she gives her energy to. And she's not rattled. If people come in emotionally unstable, she's going to be like, why don't you uh, take a five minute break? Come back to me when you are calmer. Or, you know, you seem a little bit rattled. Why don't you gather your thoughts and come back to me when you have already sorted those things out? So you're not letting other people into your space who are just um, all over the place, who are emotionally unstable. So you're definitely defending your turf. Um, I'm also seeing as well uh, being very protective when it comes to children. Okay, so... Um, I see some of you, too, having to attend those, um, they're like parent-teacher conferences where you are dealing with your teachers and your, the teachers might tell you things about the kids that you don't agree with. And I definitely feel like you're in the right here. It's not like you're being defensive about your parenting style, but I feel like you understand the children and you feel like the teacher might not have an accurate assessment of the the. Uh, of your children. So you're going to defend them. Okay. But either way, I feel like there's a sense of being able to juggle everything successfully. Your work life and your home life and your personal life balance are, are very balanced out. And you're successfully managing everything. You're going to work, you're making really good traction in your career. And you're making a really good impression with the people that you work with. You're handling your responsibilities uh, with diligence and with great care and grace and then at home your kids they're clean they're they speak properly they excel in school around bedtime you don't feel drained you you know can read them a bedtime story you tuck them into bed and you know they're they're well adjusted and then with your personal life I feel like you're you've already um, got that under control too some of you might be single parents and transitioning into a relationship with somebody that is a really good relationship partner for you. They will treat your kids, if you have children, they will treat your kids like their kids. Okay, so you're meeting somebody that will share the responsibilities with you. They don't, um, they don't keep scores as to, you know, oh, that's not my biological kid, I'm not going to take care of it. They will love you and they will um, sort of like all, they will give you and extensions of you the love that you you want to give okay so they see your kids as you know an extension of you and so if they love you they're gonna love your kids and they're gonna share the responsibilities for you for those of you who are single parents I feel like you have finally met somebody that is like worth your time that you feel you want to introduce and you trust to be around your children and if you have had to you know uh, struggle to take care of them. I don't feel like it's financially. I feel, well, it could be as well. If you have, you know, encounters difficulties, um, being a single parent, being a single mom, being a single dad, you're meeting somebody that will chip in to do their fair share of the work to alleviate the burden. So keep in mind, one person stepping up doesn't mean the other person gets to step down. It requires a concerted effort from both parties. So both parties need to contribute. Okay, so I feel like that needs to be said, but I, I do feel somebody's coming in to alleviate the situation and it's somebody that can be a really good relationship partner for you. Um, what I'm seeing here, we have the Empress and the Emperor. This is like the perfect match. There's great complementarities here. Okay, one person is like um, rules, like kind of like the outdoors. The other person rules the public space. So I definitely feel like two, this is like the perfect match. Two people that owns their domain. Two people who are very emotionally healthy and two people who are very successful in the world. So this is like a power couple dynamics coming together. And both people have really clearly defined roles and they know what needs to be done and they get to doing. So for many of you, this is like meeting your other half or having somebody that is by your side and that will really truly be there to support you and having you know that that pillar of stability that pillar of strength that you can really rely on so it looks very good um if there has been imbalances in relationship and especially i feel like you know if one person if you're in a relationship one person is unemployed and one person was like taking care of everything all the finances 
there is going to be a balancing out where the other person is going to be able to get a job to land something really good and to reclaim their their role and their their status and their authority in that public environment so that means you know getting the job getting the recognition getting a um you know it, it's like a, a self-esteem boosting job okay so they've been out of um work for a while um they can doubt their capabilities they can doubt their competencies but i definitely feel like their self-esteem is going to be boosted um also for those of you who have been juggling two jobs, I feel like one of your job is going to really pick up, which will allow you to drop the other job. So if you've been doing two jobs because you were trying to make ends meet, one job, you might get a promotion, you might get like um, a pay increase, you might get a ladder, um, um, not a ladder, a vertical like um, promotion or even a, a transfer. And that will allow you to, you know, financially be okay where you can quit your other job and still be able to, you know, um, make the rent and, and to be able to live comfortably. So I definitely see an escalation in finances. Okay. Um, I'm seeing some of you as well. You're given a lot of responsibilities because the people that you work for really trust you they trust your skills they trust your ability to get things done they trust your ability to make decisions and they they trust that you know when you do something it doesn't have errors so i, I see like uh work that is returned to you without corrections work that is returned to you without uh, markings in red because you do your due diligence to proofread to make sure everything passes the common sense test before you even submit things. So I do feel like a lot of work returned to you without any revisions necessary. Um, and because of that, you have a track record or you have a reputation of doing something very, very successfully. And so people don't have to worry. And that's why they're giving you a lot of responsibilities. Um, you are looked upon really favorably by somebody that you work under. So it could be a manager, a supervisor, whoever it is that is right above you. Because with this emperor card, this is like a, a boss, a person in a position of power. It could be male or female. And it shows up here, eight of pentacles, right next to the work card. Work card. And basically what that denotes to me is, um, you know, somebody's really keeping an eye on you. They might have um, thought about creating a position for you. And they feel like you're perfect for the job. If you are going out and, you know, setting your resumes and things like that, um, I feel if, if you are in one job and you're just like, I don't really like the people, I don't like the people that I work with, but I love my supervisors or my manager and I don't want to leave it, but I feel like I can't really progress here. You could send out your resumes and then your supervisor, your manager will convince you to stay. They're not going to coerce you because they care about you. They care about your development and they know if you're not happy, they don't want to force you. But they might even contemplate creating a new role or giving you, you know, some type of incentive so that you can stay and you can continue to work for them. Or they might even ask you, you know, what's the real reason why you're leaving? And if you feel like your coworkers are not pulling their weight, it's okay for you to tell them that. Because I feel like they're aware of it as well. So if that is the problem, you definitely should voice your opinion and don't shy away from, you know, um, I see, you know, the that Libran diplomacy coming in where you don't want to step on people's toes, where you don't want to throw anybody under the bus. But if someone is underperforming, their their supervisors, their higher ups, this person who's the emperor already knows. They already know. They're not, you know, stupid. They already know, they've already seen it and they 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 are very aware of what's happening in this work environment. So I feel like it's safe for you to say, so-and-so is lazy, so-and-so is not pulling their weight, so-and-so is like opportunistic and I have to do the work of two people and I'm getting a salary of one and that's why I'm leaving. So I feel like, you know, putting it that way will actually um, further your own agenda. So, so I feel like 
they can try to accommodate you. They want to retain you. That's just the bottom line. Okay, they will try to do things to um, to accommodate you. It, it doesn't mean that they're going to fire the other person, but I definitely feel like they can have a talk with them. They can reprimand them, and they can. Uh, give them uh, more responsibilities to make sure they finish it in a timely manner. So either way, you're, you should voice these opinions, okay? Um, I see here an element of the biological clock ticking. Some of you have, um, are probably pregnant, thinking about pregnancy, trying to get pregnant. The time is really good. You're very, very fertile. The time is good. So if you're thinking about that with a relationship partner, I feel like, you know, it, it's it's the right time. If you are trying to get yourself a little bit more financially stable first before you have children, then you want to be a little bit careful for the month of December, okay? Um, I do see, like, unintended or unplanned pregnancies as well. But either way, that's coming in. You're hitting a very fertile phase. So I feel like it's going to work out in your favor. Okay, you have a lot of good things coming in, Libras, and I feel like you're just going to be resting on cloud nine is what it feels like. Uh, emotionally, things are going to be really stable. Okay, uh, let me see for singles. So singles, um, you're dealing with somebody that you're very attracted to is what I'm seeing. I have the devil here and this indicates to me really, really intense attraction. Um, I feel like they're dealing with other people as well. So if this is a something that you're you're still testing the waters on, um, until they tell you, hey, let's be exclusive, I feel like you should assume they're seeing other people. So if you want that exclusivity, you might need to be the one to, you know, approach the topic. So un until they tell you we're exclusive, you're my girlfriend, then I feel like you should assume that there's they're talking to other people and seeing other people. I also feel like you're dating somebody who's not very financially stable. They're going to be, they're trying to be, because I feel like this person has a lot of pride and um, they see your successes and they know that, you know, they, they don't have a lot to offer. And there's a big part of them that is intimidated by your success as well. And I feel like that's going to be the motivating factor to get them a lot more um, to, to kind of like encourage them to do more, to, to create more, to um, not settle for, you know, being underemployed or underpaid. So I feel like that's going to, you're, you're going to be the inspiration to kind of light that fire under them to get them to do more in their lives. Okay. Um, what I feel though is for singles, there's definitely a really, really good match out there for you. If you're dating, you're going to feel it like this match with the Empress and the Emperor. It indicates to me like a, a very serendipitous type of meeting with your other half. Okay. Feeling like the other person has what it takes to be your significant other or feeling like you have this uh, really, really strong sense of uh, teamwork, camaraderie, group work, or just, you know, you're seeing eye to eye with one another. Not only that, there's really, really strong physical chemistry between you and that other person. I feel like for some of you, you might have already encountered this person in the work environment. And the two of you are, you're, you're sensing this connection, but you're also trying to be very professional about it as well because you work together. Um, so I definitely see see that element coming into the picture. Okay, so either way, it's going to be a really good week for you guys. I'm really happy to see this. I hope the reading resonates. And once again, um, you know, have a wonderful week.